Hi, my name is Thomas Foster and this is the first episode of a multi-part tutorial for Ableton Live 11. This tutorial is right for you if you are an absolute beginner as well as if you have previously worked with another DAW and want to get started with Live 11 quickly. Please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any further episode of Ableton Live 11. Have fun! After opening Ableton Live 11 the first time, it should look like this. On the left side, we have here the browser. And from the browser, we can take some sounds, drums, instruments or audio effects and bring them or drop them into our arrangement. We can close and open the browser. And here we have our main window, but there are two views. There is the session view and the arrangement view. The session view is probably good if you are in a live situation. In the studio, I work most of the time with the arrangement view. So let's change to the arrangement view. You also can use the tabulator, tabulator key to switch between these two views. So let's stay with the arrangement view. Whatever you select in your arrangement, you will see here in this window. There is another nice window that you can open with this arrow here. That's the information window. So if you, for example, go here on this button, you see immediately this is the link on off button. If I go here, I see this is the draw mode switch. But now I show you the most important button in Ableton Live 11 and this is for sure the play button. If I click on the play button the first time, we immediately see that the locator, I mean, the cursor, is running from left to right in our arrangement and we see here the bars and the beats. And we also can hear the beats by clicking on the metronome. So one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. That's exactly the four beats we have in a bar. And why do we have four beats in a bar? Because we are here at four to four. What is good if we want to make pop music, hip hop music, electronic music, most of the time we have Four, four. Here on the left side, we see the BPM, the beats per minute. What means beats per minute? At the moment, we have 120 beats per minute. That means if I would start counting now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I would do this exactly for one minute, after one minute, I would have exactly 120 beats. And that's why it's 120 beats per minute minute. 128 would be great if we would produce a house track, uh, a techno track would be maybe at 140, but I would rather go for a hip hop track. So let's go down to something like 95 BPM. Let's listen to this. I push the space key. One, two, three, four. That's great. That's exactly what we want. Now let's zoom in a little bit to zoom in because we want to see exactly the first four bars from here to here. To zoom in, we click in this dark gray area, click with the mouse and now we move down. All right. And now we see exactly four bars. Maybe we make it a little bit bigger. If you want to zoom out, just move up with the mouse and you also can go from left to right to scroll on your screen. But now we go exactly to see the first four bars from one to four. I make now a selection from one to two, exactly, not something like this or that, exactly from one to two. And now I click in this blue area by, with the right mouse and now we say insert empty MIDI clip. And now we generated first clip over one bar. Now we want to load a drum sound. In your browser on the left side you have some categories 
like MIDI effects, audio effects, we go to the drums and we want to load a drum rack. Here is the drum rack, we could load it directly from here, but the faster way is to load it already with the sound. And here you have all your sounds. And if we scroll down a little bit, then you should see the, for example, the 808, the most famous drum machine created in the 80s, but you still hear it in hip hop tracks and sometimes also in house tracks. If you want to hear the sounds of the kids, you could activate here this headphone. And then you hear some demo examples how this could sound. All right, let's take the 808 core kit and move it on top of our MIDI track. After loading, you see it here in this area here, the 808 core kit. This is your drum machine. We can listen here to the sounds by clicking on this little errors here. If you activate the recording for this track, you should be able to play it on your keyboard if you have a keyboard, a MIDI keyboard connected to your computer. But don't worry if you don't have a keyboard, I show you how to generate the uh, samples with the mouse. Uh, I just want to show you in a short way how to record something. I can play now the sounds on my keyboard. I click on recording and here we go. So, and here's my recording. And if I double click it, I also can see it and edit it here. But that's not what we want. So I activate this clip and erase it. Because we go now to the first clip and select it. Now we see all our drum sounds here. And we want to hear this one bar in a loop. This here is the loop. So let's move it to the left side to bar one and make it shorter, exactly one bar. You also can do this here with the numbers. So at the moment we start at bar one and the length is one bar. So it ends at bar two. To activate the loop, you have to click this button here. And what does it mean to activate the loop? I show you. We just listening to this one bar in a loop. There's a faster way to activate this uh, loop for the one bar. Let's move the loop over here again. Uh, you select exactly this one bar. You can do it by clicking on this clip or exactly by selecting from two to one. If you want to select the clip, you have to do this here on the upper side of your clip where you get the hand symbol. If you want to make a special selection like this, you have to do it in the lower part. So let's activate exactly this one bar. We press Command L and now we select exactly this one bar here. All right, now let's click the space key to start Ableton. And now we click on the metronome because we don't want to hear it anymore. We place the first bass drum here at the line where it says bass drum with a double click exactly at the first beat. Now we hear it. That's the first bass drum. And what do we see here? This is exactly one bar. And in one bar we have four quarters, four beats, at one, two, three, and four. And at the moment we have a grid of sixteenth. That means that every bar has, uh, every beat has four sixteenths and our bar has sixteen sixteenths. We can change this by clicking with the right mouse key here where it says grid, uh, 16, and now we can go, for example, to four, uh, fourth, a quarter. And now we see exactly four beats. Let's start working with these four beats here, and we create a snare with a double click on two and four. Let's listen to this.
Now we want to change again to eighth. You can do this by right clicking here or you can do it with command one or command two to go up and down with your grid. So let's go to one eighth and let's place another bass drum here at one three. Mm -hmm. It's not so interesting, right? So we can move the bass drum now with our arrow keys on our keyboard. If I click on the left, the bass drum goes to the left side. If I click on the right, it goes to the right side. So now we can listen to the different positions like this. Wonderful. Let's change the grid again to 16th and find a more interesting position. I like this one. Let's place another bass drum and move it to the right. That's good for now. Let's add a hi-hat. I double click here where it says close hi-hat on the F sharp. And because I want to place a hi-hat on every 16th, means four per beat, there's a faster way to do it. We just create the first hi-hat. And the first hi-hat is now selected. You see the blue line is telling me that this hi-hat is selected. And now with Command or Control D, we can add more hi-hats at the right side. And you see how extremely fast you can do it. Once you select this one hi-hat, Control or Command D, and now here we are. Let's add another bass drum. I select this bass drum. I say Control D or Command D to duplicate it. And now with my arrow keys, I can find the perfect position. Now I want to create something special that I would call the machine gun effect. I want to add some notes here on the last hi-hat. To do this, we zoom in, so we go to this gray arrow, click down with the mouse and now we zoom in to make it big. And now we go up with our grid, with uh, control 1 to 16th. We erase this hi-hat, uh, sorry, we go to 64th. Um, now we should see them. Now we double click here and with duplicate, means Control D, we add some more hi-hats. I like that. So at the moment we just generated one bar, but maybe we want to have more, we want to have four bars. To do this, you click here at the right upper corner where you get this uh, symbol of the mouse and now we move it to the right to get three more copies. Let's deactivate the loop. That's wonderful. I like it. Mm, next thing we do is let's add a conga. To do this, we go back to 16th here. I choose 16th. And let's add the low conga here and the mid conga maybe here or here, and a low one here. Okay, now we want to have some variation at every second bar. So we want to make our loop bigger. At the moment it's one bar. I want to have two bars. For this we use the duplicate command. I click one time on it. Now we have two bars and the second bar is a copy of the first. So what can we change? First, I want to erase this bass drum. It's enough to have it at the second repeating. And I want to erase the repeatings of our hi-hat. Wow. 
wonderful. Maybe these fast hi-hats here are too loud. To change the volume of our hi-hats, we can use the velocity because normally the velocity is changing the volume. Sometimes it's also changing the sounds, but in this case it's okay to use the velocity. So uh, how do we uh, change the velocity? I give you some uh, a simpler example. I make here a new clip and here we add some snares. And now I change the velocity by clicking here. If you don't see the velocity, you can activate it with this button here. And now I bring the velocity here down and here up. So you see how easy it is to change the velocity here. Okay, that's exactly what we want to do now at our beat. We want to take these three hi-hats and bring the velocity down. Maybe it's like this. That's nice. Okay. So maybe you want to send this project to your friend or you want to continue working on this tomorrow. So we have to save it. That's very easy. We go to the file menu. Uh, let's go to save live set. And here on the desktop, my first Ableton 11 project. Here we are. Uh, this creates a folder and in the folder, you have your project that you can open with a double click whenever you want once and you can send this to your friend. But maybe your friend does not have Ableton 11. So what do we do? We have to create an audio file. For this, we select exactly the range we want to make to an audio file. Maybe we make it a little bit longer because of the tail, the reverb tail here at the end. And now let's select everything beginning at one until somewhere here. And now we go here to export audio. We want to export the master, that's right. Here you can create a normal WAV file that you would need if you want to upload it to Spotify or iTunes or whatever. To send it to your friend, maybe an MP3 is better because it has not so much megabytes and it sounds also okay. Just for listening, an MP3 is fine. Maybe we make both WAV file and uh, MP3. Uh, you also can directly upload it to SoundCloud if you have an account there, but for now, WAF and the MP3 is okay. And let's say export and let's call this audio that we have not a misunderstanding. And now let's take a look to our export. Here it is. Here the MP3 that you can listen and send it to your friend or here the WAF file that you can upload to Spotify or iTunes. My name is Thomas Foster and this is my YouTube or Facebook channel Thomas Foster Music Production, which is all about music production. Here you will find tutorials on the most important DAWs or music programs, the most important plugins and I'll show you how to produce the current sound of the charts and the clubs. If you have any questions about this video or more generally about music production, just write me in the comments. I'll answer all your questions. Of course, I'm also happy about a simple feedback or suggestion for another video. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my videos. At this point, I say thank you for being there. Always stay creative. Cheers.